Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We are working on a chat app that created with WebSockets, and in the last video we got to the point where our app was up, and it should have caused our page to, uh, our server to get an error on it and print something, because it should be connecting, but it wasn't. So offline I did a little looking, and I noticed that we had I had flipped the R and the C, so instead of being source, it was SCR. Obviously, that means that it doesn't load it in. Unfortunately, one of the downsides of HTML is that it also doesn't give you an error message when it does that. It would have been really nice if this had said script with unknown tag, but it didn't. Uh, so we got no feedback on that. So this page still works the same way that it had before, but <clears throat> now there is an exception in here. So we get the socket and it says it's an implementation is missing. This is real, really what we were expecting to have happen. And the reason for that is because right now our application prints getting socket and then it pulls out this actor ref. It passes it out, which is an actor ref. And we didn't know what to put here. Now it turns out this is what we're supposed to put here is something that tells it how to make our actor, okay? To help keep things organized, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create another package under app, and we are going to call it actors. And inside of actors, I am going to make a, we'll just call it a chat actor. Okay, so we have this chat actor, and we want to say class chat actor. The thing that makes it an actor is we uh, extend the type actor, so aka actor. And this is now unhappy, and it turns out that is because all actors have to have a method in them called receive. So def receive, and then I am going to get rid of a lot of the things that it put in there for me. The receive is equal to a partial function. Okay? And in Scala, we can create partial functions by just putting curly braces with cases inside of them. So back here, when we created these things, we said that this was our WebSocket took strings and sent strings back out. So all of the inputs that we get should be of type string when they are coming from the, the controller. So the controller basically is going to send on anything that gets that comes from the WebSocket. So things the client sends to the WebSocket are going to get sent to this chat actor and they are going to come through as strings. And so to see that, Let's put something inside of here that just will print that out. I also, for debug purposes, turns out when I write actors in Akka, I always include a last case, and it has to be the last case because this will bind to any message that you get. It is a case that tells me that we got a message that we didn't deal with properly. We didn't know how to deal with it. So unhandled message plus m. And so this will just print out and it'll tell me what the message was. My, and I should go ahead and say in chat actor, so we know where this happened. Having a message like that print out can save you all types of grief when it comes to your debugging. Because otherwise, because this receive is a partial function, if you get a message that you don't know how to deal with, what normally happens is it just silently, uh, you know, just goes away. Okay, so there's this. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and make an object called chat actor. And this is just because this is a style that is use that is common. It turns out that what we need to put inside of here is what Akka calls props. It is the properties. It tells you how to build one of these actors. And a, an approach that a lot of people do to 
to creating this is to put a method called props in the companion object. that gives back a props of whatever it is that we are building. Okay, um, you're only, remember I said that you you get hold of actor refs, you don't get hold of actors. It turns out if you try to say new chat actor and you're not inside of a props, it will crash. You are literally not allowed to create actors outside of the Akka system. It's part of how they prevent you from screwing things up, uh, basically. And so this gives us back the properties for making a chat actor. So inside of here, we can replace our three question marks with a chat actor dot props. And this is unhappy currently because we haven't imported it. Okay. Uh, so if we were to get a message now on our socket, this would print out over on our server. So how about after we get the socket, we go ahead and we send something through. Now in reality, we're going to want to send stuff every time they, they type something, but at least to start off with, we want to send something that just checks. Um, something that says, I don't know, uh, test message. Okay, let's come over here and let's refresh our page. Exception dong, failed to execute send on web socket, on web socket still connecting state. Okay, so our, the send didn't work because we were unable to get a proper connection according to this. Let's see what happened over here. We had a getting socket from that. Yep, when they when we got the thing for a uh, I also got that. Um, there's a main. I'm just trying to find the one that actually requested the socket. Now we got a print for it. They're saying that it was getting the socket and that print is right here. And then we should have given back this actor flow. So the web socket accept of a string string for the types that we want to connect of our request. This happened because that printed out and then we want an actor ref that has an out and the chat actor. Hmm. Um, turns out that I know we need this out here uh, because in order for the chat actor to send anything back to the client, that actor ref is what we send it to. And I want to go ahead and pass that in up here. At this point, I'm not 100% certain why it is not finishing the communication of out bang connected. Uh, that should send something back to the client. Of course, we don't have anything right now in the client that is reading that. I'm kind of interested in what that is going to do. So it's still failing to send the WebSocket because it's still in the connected state. Actually, I do know what's going on here. We're sending it too fast. Um, <laughs> and so while this seemed like a nice way to test things, uh, it turns out it's really not a nice way to test things because this is happening asynchronously. So this send to create a WebSocket uh, is, is processing and then it immediately tries to do this and the WebSocket isn't open. We could wind up having this happen on a state change. So 
you know, there's like, for example, an on open. Um, I'm going to, I really haven't played with this, but you know, hey, seems like that might work. So that would then wait until it has opened and only send the message then. Okay. Uh, huh. Okay. Apparently I'm not going to get any luck on that one. We'll come back in the next video and we'll do this the right way. We'll make it so that when they type in something and hit enter, it'll send it on the socket uh, then. That way there will be enough time for the socket to be fully opened and we can start doing something with communication and making sure that they are talking back and forth.